This is the day we go to the grocery store to get a live lobster. But instead of eating him, we're gonna keep him as a pet. When I was a kid and I went to the grocery store, I would see these live creatures for sale. And I always thought, how cool would it be to take one of these guys home but instead of eating it, we keep it as a pet. Recently, I saw a video where a guy named Brady gets a grocery store lobster. He names it Leon and keeps it as a pet. You can watch their adventures on Brady Brandwood's channel. Believe it or not, Brady isn't the first one to do this. In fact, in this video five years ago, this guy does the exact same thing, except he names his lobster Larry. Then again, in this other five-year-old video, these people get a lobster from the grocery store, keep it as a pet for a while, but but then they ship it to a place where it then is released into the wild. What a happy ending. These videos inspired me to start a little series on this channel that I call Grocery Store Pets. Last video we went to the grocery store and got a huge crab. We named him Pancake and gave him a brand new home. He loves the sand, eating shrimp, and most of all, bubbles. I'm looking forward to keeping a lot of different grocery store pets such as octopus, crayfish, bullfrogs, but today is the day that we get our very own pet lobster. So I jump in the car, pick up a U-Haul, and go get a huge 260 gallon tank. We are like two inches away from this semi truck. I tried to squeeze into this lane, but yeah, we're not gonna fit it. All right, the package is secure. Okay. Here the aquarium is in my bedroom. This thing was really hard to get through the door. It took four of us and a lot of effort, but what a beauty. Once set up, this will not only be the home for our new lobster friend, but also for Pancake the Crab. What do you think, Pancake? You excited? <laughs> Look at the size difference. This is 40 gallons. This is 265 gallons. Pancake didn't seem to be excited, but I knew exactly what would get him up and going. You want a worm? Got your worm. There's a worm. Lunchtime. Ooh, get it. Get it, Pancake. After eating the worm, Pancake was ready to bury in the sand and take a nap, which made it the perfect time for me and my pet parrot, Mango, to set up the aquarium. Before we start, we're gonna get a little snack. Oh yeah, you like that? Look pretty good? This is all the stuff I bought to put inside the aquarium. So, I was trying to explain something here, but honestly, I'd rather just watch Mango. Here we have the tank with pretty much all the medium in. As you can see on this side, we have a lot deeper sand and I made kind of a rock dam to keep it in there. I'm thinking Pancake will be on this side because he likes to bury in the sand. And then on this side, we have kind of like gravel mixed with a sandy like substance. And I'm thinking of putting a shelter right here for the lobster. So to make the shelter, I got this little pet carrier. It's too long though, so I'm going to have to saw it. Cutting something with a saw requires adult supervision. So I'm gonna ask my son to cut it so I can be the adult supervision. Well done. And I'm gonna surround it with these rocks. I then put in some nice fake plants, some fake coral, and a big old purple rock in the corner. Now the tank is ready for the lobster. Wait, hmm, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh yeah, water. So I duct tape the garden hose to the kitchen filtered water and run it all the way back to the fish tank. Look how perfect it looks. I then add a cool contraption called a wave maker. A wave maker makes waves. I then add some chemicals that take chemicals out of the water. Now it's time to add the salt. I carefully measure it out. Make sure you mix the salt really well. I'm using a wooden spoon. Also make sure you don't get it in your eye. If the wooden spoon isn't enough, you can use a bread dough mixer. I think we are ready, but there's only one way to know for sure 
Ooh, perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, this is heavy. Go oh, away. There we go. Oh my goodness. Is this supposed to do that? The water started clearing up pretty quickly, so it was at this point that I added a special formula called oh. Turbo Start. It has a whole bunch of live bacteria that jumpstart the tank. The water is going to drain up here, come down into what we call a sump tank. It's gonna go through these filter pads down into these bio balls that will grow beneficial bacteria. Here the tank is in all her glory. She's completely cycled and ready to go. The temperature and salt levels are perfect as well. A really cool thing is I actually have pancakes tank hooked up to siphon out the back here and go into the same sump tank down here that this huge one's connected to. That makes it so I don't have to have more than these chillers. And the filter system can be the same. Once I move pancake into this big tank with our new lobster friend, then I'm planning to put something else in this tank and I'm thinking probably octopus because I found a grocery store where they sell octopus for food. This definitely took way more effort than I thought it would, but it's going to be worth it. Just some quick technical stuff that's kind of fun. I put the aerators down here in the sump tank. That way we don't have to have a whole bunch of obnoxious bubbles in the water here. We do have some bubbles in the back because it's a cool aesthetic. One thing I'm actually really proud of is this siphon mechanism because, so it siphons the water down here through a pipe going all the way back. But you see these bubbles, they would collect here until the siphon would break and it would stop, which means this whole tank would overflow onto my bedroom floor. What I did was I got this little tube and put it inside the big tube. I don't know if you can see it there. It's sucking the bubbles out because I have a little pump on the other side and it's working flawlessly so that this never stops. This project turned out to be immensely more expensive than I had estimated. Literally broke my bank. However, thank you very much to those who gave to the GoFundMe. That helped a lot. This tank is ready. What are we waiting for? Let's go get the lobster. We are here at the grocery store. I am ecstatic about getting our new lobster friend. Look how tightly packed all these lobsters are. Now, sadly, I can only take one home right now. This guy right here seems like he's fighting for his life. He seems like he really wants to get out. I think this is the one we want. Thank you so much. Sure, See you. See ya. Here he is, ready to be introduced to his new home. I'm actually gonna assume that this is a girl. And as far as a name goes, because we named our crab pancake, I wanna name her Waffle. Now, guys, I have a confession to make. I know I said that I would just get one. But I also got this super small lobster. It seems pretty lifeless. It has a little bit of life in him. I just couldn't not keep it. So here it is. I have some plans for him. I'm gonna name him Toast because that's what he would have been if I had left him at the store. When I got Toast at the store, he was barely moving, so I wanted to make a place where he could fully recover. All right, there we go. He'll be in this basket for a while until he is fully recovered. I have a feeling his energy will come back quickly, though. All right, without further ado, let's get these rubber bands off of Waffle here, and hopefully they come off. Oh, wow, hopefully this will bring some relief. Okay, here you go, Waffle. Here's your new home. Wow. There you go. Oh man, that was a bit of a rough landing there. After Waffle survived her face plan, she took the first few steps in her brand new home. She then checked out the coral. All those bubbles going up is her releasing unneeded air that got trapped when she was taken out of the water. She then approached her cave. I don't think she sees the front door, so I guess she's gonna take the side door. She
she checked out the cave, but I guess she's still in an exploring mood because she proceeds to explore every single corner of this habitat. I think she likes the purple rock and her reflection. I think she also may sense toast all the way up there. I was really hoping this left side with sand would be pancake side because he loves burying in the sand, but Waffle just started making her home right here. Look how she uses her entire body like a bulldozer. It looks like our lobster friend is a pretty hard worker. I got up in the middle of the night and found Waffle making her home in the cave. That made me really happy. By the next morning, she was still working. As I was watching her, at one point, I felt like we were having a moment, and so I reached out my hand to hold her claw. Then suddenly I realized, eh. Waffle seemed to endlessly be working. I never really saw her stop. She worked so hard, maybe a little bit too hard. She dug so deep that she reached the glass on the bottom. In fact, Waffle took so much dirt out that the whole cave started to cave in. I had to rebuild the foundation of the cave, so I went ahead and added some more plants as well and some more rocks. Now I think it looks even better. Hopefully Waffle doesn't destroy the foundation again. After a few more loads, Waffle finally takes a break and rests in front of her cave. After all that hard work, I knew Waffle had to be hungry, so her first meal in the new aquarium is going to be a nice, big, juicy worm. At first the worm floated off to the side, so I had to kind of scoot it back to her. But as soon as she knew it was there, she clamped down on it and slurped it up like a noodle. She seemed pretty hungry, so I put a few more worms in there for her. Listen to her clamp down on the worm. I'm not using any sound effects here. Toast still wasn't moving that much, but I wanted to give him some food so that he had more energy. And sure enough, he was hungry because he grabbed that thing and gobbled it up. It seems like Waffle got a lot of energy from those worms because right after she started doing some major renovations, which included pulling rocks out of the foundation and pushing them up to the front. She even grabbed a rock from the very back of the cave and pushed it all the way nearly to the halfway mark on the tank. I realized she really wanted to renovate the cave, but I didn't want her using the rocks that were the foundation. So, while she was out exploring, I got a whole bunch of shiny rocks and different shells and stuff and just put it right in the middle of her home. I don't know, she might be upset when she gets home. Let's find out. Yeah, she seems a little upset. She knocked the camera over. And at first she was definitely a little disoriented, but pretty soon she was shoveling it out and decorating the outside of her home. I like what you've done with the place, Waffle. I thought she might like a front doormat, so I put a big old shell right there. However, a couple hours later I found out she didn't because she completely buried it. Waffle has quite the attitude. 
I went to the store to get some fresh shrimp for them, but while I was there, I found some live snails. I also got some live clams. Right away, I dropped the snails in the tank. Snails are a really good thing to have in your aquarium. They keep it clean, and they're also just cool to see slowly moving across your tank. These specific snails are kind of ugly, but it actually helps with their camouflage. Can you spot the snail on these coral? It's pretty hard. I even put one in with pancake, although Pancake was kind of eyeing him like he was a piece of food, so... As far as the clams go, they're probably going to be boring and just bury under the sand, but still kind of cool. Time to feed Waffle a nice fresh shrimp. Notice how she checks it out with her long antenna. She can stay at quite a distance while still touching it with her antenna like that. 20 minutes later and Waffle still has not come and got the shrimp. I then noticed that Pancake was trying to eat the snail, so I intervened and then gave Pancake a shrimp. At first, Pancake is kind of awkward when he's trying to get the shrimp, but then once he finally has it in his claws, he rips it to pieces and then just devours it. Check out all the debris flying everywhere. Pancake is quite a messy eater, but at least he eats. It's been about an hour and Waffle still hasn't, so I went ahead and gave Toast a shrimp. At first, Toast is a little intimidated, but then once he finds its food, he lunges at it. And he tears that thing apart too. Toast is kind of a slow eater, I've noticed, but at least he eats. Waffle still hasn't even tasted the shrimp. In fact, one time she took a load of dirt up there and pushed the shrimp, but then she just ignored it and went back into her home. I then suddenly realized that maybe she was being polite and didn't want to eat the shrimp if it wasn't being offered to her. So I took the net and made it obvious that I was indeed offering it to her. She then politely shoves it out of her house? Unbelievable. <laughs> Did I mention that she has some attitude? I did catch her a few hours later sneaking some bites of shrimp. As nighttime comes, Waffle is resting in her cave. Pancake is tucking himself in into the sand. And Toast is, well, still finishing his shrimp. I love doing these projects and keeping these really cool creatures, but it is time consuming and takes a lot of funds to take care of them and build their habitats. If you would like to help with this, you can join me financially by clicking the join button right next to the subscribe button, which I know you've already pressed. <laughs> Even a couple dollars goes a long way in taking care of these animals. There will also be special perks for those who join, like inside videos and streams and post updates. Also, if I get 10 people to join before the next video comes out, I will do a pin test with all three waffle toast and pancake so if you want to see me in pain <laughs> then dedicate a couple dollars to help take care of them thanks guys i really appreciate your support i will see you on the next adventure when i introduce pancake to his new home and waffle wait wait don't stop the video i want to tell them something subscribe or i'll pinch you I'm